the enemy appears to be presently in a defensive posture, preparing for offensive operations. They're estimated to be at 80% strength at this time in building. The current analysis of their operations indicates that they will attack within 24 hours, and their most likely avenue of approach is through the Valley of Death into our area of operations. I'm Captain Johnson, the Division Staff Duty Officer. This is an AV notification. Your commander is to report immediately to the Division EOC. Second Brigade out. The 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault, is on alert. This morning, it is an exercise, but a most serious one. The 101st is the Army's best when it comes to air ground coordination. Able to deploy anytime, anywhere in the world, 101st troopers are prepared, trained and equipped to fight and sustain themselves. Eagle Watch 3 will test that capability. Before sunset, the affected 101st troops will be notified and processed for deployment. They're used to frenzied activity and ask for no explanation other than the outline they receive. Security dictates that. Simultaneously, equipment is ready. Different terrain, varying conditions, require specific preparations. And despite the time pressures, the crews must perform with utmost skill. There is no room for mistakes. Elsewhere, leaders are briefed on the needs of the mission, make their plans and issue orders based on the objective. 18 hours from alert notification, the first C-5A, C-141, and KC-10 aircraft carrying troops and equipment will rumble into the early morning sky. Their destination? A hostile desert environment. Wind, sand, and enemy tanks await the task force deployed to meet this threat. Eagle Watch 3 is underway. The next phase for Eagle Watch 3 will be establishing the Intermediate Staging Base, ISB. The ISB will serve as the assembly point and hub of the operation to bring 1,700 troops, 250 vehicles and 48 helicopters into the battle area. Maintenance crews and pilots work rapidly to reassemble the aircraft and test pilots check airworthiness. Immediately, flight crews begin deploying aircraft to the field, with the rest of the task force deploying by ground convoy. In the field, the 101st employs a unique approach to the universally practiced combined arms concept, the Combat Aviation Management System. The goal of this system is to totally integrate aviation into the ground tactical plan to assure maximum coordination of air assault operations. This critical planning effort makes use of all aviation assets. Lift, attack, cavalry and medium lift helicopters. The sophisticated equipment and planning of the National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California presents participants with the most realistic battlefield situations possible. For Eagle Watch 3, the center provides opposing forces well trained in the tactics and doctrine of Warsaw Pact countries. Armored and mechanized forces use vehicles resembling Soviet equipment. Both enemy and friendly vehicles and aircraft, as well as troops, are equipped with a multiple integrated laser engagement system, MILES, consisting of a transmitter and receiver. MILES simulates weapons firing and the receiver, if hit, signals its destruction by a flashing light and or audible tone. MILES relays information on engagements and kills immediately to a computer center. After an operation, commanders and staff attend a debriefing where they learn whether and why the operation succeeded or failed. The contrived scenario involves the 101st in both offensive and defensive operations. Reconnaissance in force with a hasty attack, raid, defense, deep attack with link-up, and passage of an armored battalion will be conducted. During the reconnaissance in force, the air cavalry troop moves well forward of advancing friendly troops. Flying nap of the earth to mask themselves from enemy observation and weapons, the OH-58 scout aircraft move forward, while the AH-1 attack helicopters maintain positions that will enable them to engage targets of opportunity. 
radio silence is maintained. Behind these weapons teams, the U-860s carry ground cavalry scouts to establish observation posts, to secure the area already cleared, and to remain alert to enemy movement into the area. Black Hawk helicopters deliver troops and equipment to find the enemy and to fix his position. Three infantry companies, including mortar platoons and attached anti-tank sections equipped with jeep-mounted tow missile systems, are positioned by UH-60s and CH-47s to seize objectives along the route of advance. When enemy troops are discovered on the final objective, the task force commander decides to conduct a night attack. Pathfinders and ground cavalry infiltrate under cover of darkness to mark landing zones and provide security. Black Hawk crews, skilled at night flying techniques and aided by the latest development in night vision goggles, commence the air assault at midnight. Shortly after sunrise, the attack succeeds. The objective is secure. After an enemy reinforcement attempt is thwarted by attack helicopters, intelligence is received indicating that the enemy is massing for an attack. Faced with the need to defend against a motorized rifle regiment and prevent enemy forces from reaching the task force rear boundary, the task force commander begins extensive engineer preparation. Immediately, massive barrier materials are brought forward by UH-60 and CH-47 aircraft. commander positions his air assault infantry in the Valley of Death. As the engineer effort continues, a motorized rifle company conducts a spoiling attack and is destroyed by attack helicopters. As the task force commander prepares his defense, he is given a mission to conduct a deep raid. The discovery by strategic reconnaissance of chemical munitions 80 kilometers behind enemy lines prompts the battalion task force commander to conduct a night air assault company-sized raid. The air cavalry troop is dispatched to find landing zones and to insert pathfinders. The pathfinders establish terminal guidance navigational aids at the flight route release point and in the landing zone. Blackhawks and Chinooks ferry the rifle company into position. Flying at 110 knots, totally blacked out, the helicopters maintain nap of the earth altitudes of 30 to 50 feet through the use of ANVIS-6 night vision goggles, similar to the optics used to produce these scenes. The division routinely uses and practices these tactics. The aircraft readily seen here are in fact not visible to the naked eye. This procedure will defeat optically tracked weapon systems. Additionally, these low altitudes and high air speeds help protect helicopters from small arms fire and radar-guided air defense. The insertion is undetected. After the assault, the helicopters move to a logger area where they wait to remove the troops after the raid. Cavalry and attack helicopters remain on station to provide fire support for the ground commander. Their mission completed, the UH-60s and CH-47s return the raiding party to the defensive sector. The engineer barriers are completed and covered by fire. The defense is ready. Enemy reconnaissance elements and obstacle breaching teams infiltrate during darkness and begin to fill in the tank ditches and cut wire that was placed in position only hours earlier by engineers. Just before daylight, massive enemy artillery preparation of smoke and time-fused artillery is placed on the barriers and key terrain within the defensive sector. But when the enemy advance guard arrives at the barriers, it is eliminated by attack helicopters. Close behind, the first echelon, consisting of two motorized rifle battalions, attacks and begins breaching the first obstacle. The heavy smoke covering the breaching operations limits the effective fires of the AH-1s. Elements of the first echelon breach the first obstacle and begin attacking, trying to breach the second barrier. The ground commander's defense, in depth, 
allows ground toes, dragons, and vipers to destroy the first echelon forces. Following close behind, the enemy second echelon pours through the first barrier and onto the second obstacle. Again, the anti-tank positions in depth, combined with aerial toes, defeat the enemy. Over 50% of the attacking second echelon is destroyed. Then, AH-1 Cobras, maneuvered to the rear of the defensive sector, clear of the smoke, are able to destroy the remaining force. The defense is successful. To exploit the success, the battalion task force conducts a deep attack, seizes key terrain and conducts a link-up, and assists the passage of an armor battalion. The task force commander plans a three-company attack, reinforced with ground tows and mortars. Due to extremely high winds, a safety decision is made to launch only Black Hawks and CH-47 aircraft. The attack is successful and the terrain secured. The armor battalion links up with the air assault soldiers and passes through the task force and continues the attack to the east. The air assault battalion task force, its work done, is moved to a rear assembly area for refitting and preparation for the next battle. Five days ago, Eagle Watch 3 began. This exercise was designed to answer the question of whether light forces fighting as combined arms and massing firepower can prevail against armor. The 101st, through careful preparation, close coordination of ground and air operations, and effective use of terrain and mobility, answered that question. And it proved something more. It proved that the 101st is not only equal to the rigors of the desert, but is ready to take on any challenge of modern warfare anywhere in the world.